another video with Zone Tools tips and tricks series. In this video, I'm gonna talk about search term collisions or keyword collision and why you should avoid it. I'm gonna uh, use a screenshot that was provided by one of our users, which I, uh, um, I how do you say, I uh, deleted or covered all uh, the, the important details about what is selling and what product, how in the ad groups and the keyword. The important thing to understand is that what you see right here, all of this screenshot is taken from the same uh, keyword across his uh, account, which in this case, for the sake of this example, we call it, we, we change whatever keyword it was to helium balloons. Okay, so um, we did, we worked together on it and we did a search for helium balloons uh, on his um, keyword dashboard. And we came out with this screen, which is screenshot. And as you can see, these are all the instances of helium balloons within his account, which are about 20, if not more. And uh, almost every one of them is in a different campaign and in a different ad group. And now let's look at the performances. So what you can see is that for whatever reason, Amazon decide to send the most traffic, so the most impressions, to this specific keyword with this specific exact match inside the EX1 campaign. Okay. Now, this is good because as you see the performance, they're not bad at all. Okay. Because we generated 27 orders at, we made 500 bucks at a 70% day cost, which is good. But if you look and dig better into the data, you see that for instance, there is this exact over here. Look at the stats of this one, right? So compared to the EX1, EX1 is here and EX5 is here. Okay, so compared to the EX1, EX1 is 0.81% CTR and the EX5 is 1.41% CTR. What does this tell me? This tells me that for whatever reason, the users, when they search in a balloon, they deem the EX5 much more relevant than the EX5 to whatever we want to buy. So for each time you show a EX5 to a user that is searching for helium balloon, there's like almost twice as much the likelihood that the same user will click on the EX5 SKU versus the EX1. Okay, this is how I interpret the click-through rate. Um, so already here we see that if we found a way to force Amazon to simply show the EX5 SKU and keyword pairing, we will get twice as many clicks. Now you can also see that the cost per click of the EX1 is higher than the cost per click of the EX5. Okay, so not only will get more clicks, but also that click will cost less money to us. Additionally, you can see that the conversion rate of the EX5 and keyword, so the skew of the EX5 and helium balloon matching is, uh, in this case, is a little bit below the conversion of the EX5, but still, is good enough, uh, especially because our ACOS is much lower, keeping into consideration the fact that the cost per click is smaller. Okay, so in my opinion, running, posing the X1 SKU and simply forcing Amazon to simply show the X5 SKU and campaign for this keyword might bring you more sales, more volume and ultimately more profit because in, again in my opinion the goal of ppc is not to create more sales but to make you more money not always of course not always because when you launch a product you might want to create more sales but over time whenever you look at data in this way if you are to spend money on a keyword 
Would you rather spend money on a keyword that brings you 10% profit at the end of the day, or would you rather spend money on a keyword and a skew mesh that brings you double that? Uh, in my business, the answer is easy. I'd rather spend money and show a customer whatever skew keyword mesh brings the best conversion, the best click through rate, and ultimately the best profit margin for me. And the other SKUs, I wouldn't advertise them. Uh, I would still sell them because most likely this is the same listing with different variations. Most likely, I don't know. But uh, my choice is if I have to put one dollar into a slot machine, I want to use the slot machine who gives me the most out. And the other slot machine, I wouldn't use them. I will still maybe um, work on organic ranking, but as for PPC goes, I would pick the best, most performing SKU keyword match type. Now we can run the same analysis on the phrase match. Now we see that um, down here, the phrase match was getting the most volume of impressions is this one, EX4. All right, and we can see that EX4 has 0.98% CTR, and a conversion rate of 30%, and an ACOS of 12.12% over here. Now, if you look at the other uh, phrase match that is close to this one, we're gonna find the EX3 down here. Okay, EX3 down here. You can see that although the cost per click is slightly higher, this cost, uh, the click-through rate is quite much higher, the conversion rate is a lot higher, so we get 35 over 30%, and the ACOS is a lot lower. So again, in my opinion, whatever the skew and keyword pairing of EX3 brings in much many, many more clicks and more conversion and a better profit than the EX4 skew keyword pairing. So again, in my opinion, in my business, what I will do, I will find a way to force Amazon to simply show this one and ignore the X4. And this means either posing whatever keyword is in here or campaign, or simply not showing the skew we are showing here for this specific keyword. Um, Again, this is not a, there is not an easy answer for this. A keyword collision is an issue. Um, a lot of uh, users, a lot of accounts, a lot of brands sells products that are all products in their um, inventory are relevant to the same keyword, so that's very hard. But from the purely numbers and PPC perspective, if the goal of PPC is to bring in as many as much money as possible with the least spend as possible, it shouldn't matter what SKU you're advertising as long as you know it's the SKU and keyword pairing that is bringing you exactly that. The most clicks, the most conversion and the most money. And the other SKU, in order not to affect the good performance of what I just told, I will just not run them. Uh, the way I will mine this kind of data will be most progress in selling color variations or size variation, I will find a way to structure a PGM. Uh, although I always say that you should put in a PGM rather that are the same uh, profit margin and the same sales price point. Uh, if your inventory shows a lot of products that are similar and related to the same keyword, I might want to structure the PGM in a different way, so including product with a slightly different profit margin, slightly different price points uh, in order to identify which one converts the best within that PGN and then pose all the other SKUs. That's what I might want to do. Uh, but again, uh, I don't expect to be right in what you just show you. I just show you uh, what the data tells me. And every business owner has a knowledge of his business that is not what I have. So uh, you should take the best decision for your business. And aside from that, you should always test, test, test. Never believe what I say unless you test it. And even if you don't or do believe what I say, 
you should always run a test to know if your previous, what you were doing previously was better or worse than what you think or what I told you should do. So always test. Aside from testing, look at the data and make informed decision based on the data that Amazon gives you. Um, thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. Um, I'll see you in this next next video.